So in the last video, we talked about how you get the formation of dunes and berms to the, form to the action of both waves and the wind. Uh, we also talked about the different kinds of things which deposits send, like rivers and waves, as they cut through the continents and bring different kinds of materials. Uh, now, what we didn't talk about is the idea of the beach cycle, or the idea that the beach actually can get eroded uh, throughout the time. So let's talk about that. There are many things that build the beaches. For example, if you have strong sea winds, you're going to have more waves hitting stronger in the water, depositing more materials as they, they picked up from the bottom. You're also going to have more beach if you have, because of winds because you're going to have the sand being picked up by the wind to form the backshore. You're also going to have, uh, if you have less rains and less storms, you're going to have less uh, water being washed out into the ocean uh, carrying the sand that, that, that was deposited in the dunes. And if you have a lot of sunshine, you're going to have less uh, water just sitting there, uh, chemically eroding the, the beach. And so you're going to have more evaporation and more salt being left behind and then more beach formation and so forth. So while the, the dry beach is accreting, all right, the wet beach is going to shrink. Or it's going to look smaller because you're going to think this idea that the more the more wind is actually blowing, the more less more sunlight you have, the less rains you have the bigger the back shore and the wet, the wet dry beach is going to be, right? So, and the beach will get becoming steeper and steeper because of that, that dune formation that you see. Now, if you get into a process of erosion, you have the opposite. If the winds are blowing more towards the water than towards the land, you don't have the formation of dunes. And you have the opposite. The wind erosion will take the, the, those dunes and throw them back in the water. And then you, if you have a lot of rains and a lot of storm and not too much sunshine, you have exactly the opposite. And the beach is going to become eroded and the wet beach is going to become bigger and bigger. And with all the new sand and the beach will become flatter because of that. All right. So if you see a very flat beach, that probably means the beach is becoming eroded. If you see a very, very, very steep beach, it means the beach is probably becoming being built. So the more of a berm and dunes that you see, the more you're probably in accreting the beach. But if the beach is flatter, you're probably eroding the beach. And it, some beach areas actually go through both processes throughout the months, depending on the wind, the way the wind is blowing through those months and whether or not it's stormy or not. All right, and we'll, show, we'll talk about that in a second. But to maintain the balance between this, you're going to need some waves actually carrying material. So small waves, what is going to happen is that you're going to pick up things from sandbars and from the bottom of the ocean, uh, things which are being set there on the near shore by things like longshore currents and things like that. So the coastal drift is going to take the sand thing into the sandbar. I remember that where the sand is coming from coastal erosion and from rivers and being deposited uh, in the near shore or on the offshore, depending on how, how, how the fineness of the material. We're going to talk about that in a second. Now... This will be dragged to the side by longshore currents, both the deep sandbars and the, sh the sh shallower sandbars. The shallow sandbar can be picked up by small waves and being thrown into the beach. Like we talked about, the top moves faster than the bottom does and so forth. Now, wind can actually carry that to dunes successively, or the beach can actually splash, splash it into the dunes successively. So, that, or, as we talked, a washover. Now, the opposite can also happen. Oh, by the way, here, the deep sand, when, whenever there's a storm wave, the, the, those waves will go really, really deep. And then they can actually catch the deep sand and throw it into a sandbar. And so uh, storm waves will actually make the sandbars larger. Okay? However, the same storm waves that made the sandbar larger will also destroy the beach because it, it will batter the beach with very strong waves. So that's why... Remember we talked about the headland and we talked about the fact that the, the quiet beach actually it's usually full of sand and then because of the diverging wave pattern that makes the waves quieter and the headland has a converging pattern in which it makes waves stronger there. Now the erosion of the headland it gets picked up and then thrown into the quiet area and then that gets deposited the sand. But if the beach you have is being hit by massive waves. You're going to increase the undertow. Remember we talked about this. The stronger the Baker current, the stronger the undertow. And so you're going to have more erosion of the beach of the beach sand. Especially when you have things like storm waves, which is coupling wind and water damage of the sand line. And then you're going to have more sand actually being thrown into the sandbar. So this is going to end up eroding the beach. Then 
by gravity drift and other currents like a down, down, dwelling, downwelling and other tow currents and other things like that, little by little, that sand is going to be picked from the near shore to the offshore into the inner shelf, mid shelf, and the off shelf, and so forth. And that eventually is going to end up in the bottom of the ocean. And so that's how you get those different formations and construction of the beach areas. Now remember, where did all the sand come from? From the actual coastal erosion by waves and from the, from the position from the rivers. And I hope this all puts it all together for you so you can understand how you actually go through the cycle of depositing the beach. Now, one thing that's actually important, and we've been mentioning about it, but I wanted to put it out again, is that the, how far a material travels actually depends on the fineness of the material and how much this material tends to stick to itself. So, for example, pebbles, which are very large, they have a very large diameter, and you see that up here. Pebbles have a very large diameter. They actually, it takes a lot of power to make pebbles move. Notice that. You are around a, from 10 to 100 centimeters per second. So, it means that the, the velocity, uh, in order for you to erode pebbles, you have to have wind or or water moving at extremely fast pace to actually drag those pebbles. So it's going to be it's going to be hard to erode a pebble beach or to uh, erode pebbles. Granules, which are slightly smaller, you're going to have slightly less velocity necessary as well. For sand, you have even less velocity. So that means, uh, but still, you're going to need more speed for the water or the wind to drag and erode sand than you will to erode silt or clay. So what, in that, that, in that, that, what that means is that you're going to get muds and fine clay in the far parts of the, uh, of the shoreline. You're going to have silt and clay in the middle, fine sand and silt before that, coarse sand sitting here, and then cl sitting closer, you're going to have bars made of granules and pebbles and things like that. So erosion and deposition happens at different rates for different kinds of materials which is why the bottom, the actual abyssal plane, tends to be made of clay and sil silt materials. Those muds which are in the bottom of the ocean are made mostly of the, of the finer materials which can actually be dragged down from the foreshore to the uh, offshore and, and then into the shelf, the inner, middle and outer shelves and eventually down the slope to tributary currents into the actual abyssal plains. And so the abyssal plains will mostly have muds and fine clays because those are the lighter materials which will go through the gravity drift process faster. Uh, which also explains why beaches are usually made of sandy material most more than clay and silt materials because those materials tend to be dragged more by the wave action of undertows and things like that. So that's why beaches are mostly made of sand and why Pebbles and granules tend to be behind the beach on the, on the back shore area because they don't get dragged at all into the, into the water so much, all right, until they get eroded into sand. Now, another thing that you have to do when you talk about erosion is the idea of, of the berm being destroyed by wave motion and being deposited in the bottom of the ocean. So you have an offshore bar. We talked about this. Uh, they call seamounts and things like that. And then what, what will end up happening is that the berm... Uh, which basically is constructed, remember the berm is constructed by wave motion, constantly throwing more sand to create that beach line, right? So, so but the same berm can be can collapse by if there's uh, too much accumulation and destabilization of the berm, or if there's uh, too much storm, storm waves or wind or things like that, the berm can collapse to form a more uh, gradual slope. And you see that this is something that actually looks like the process that does notches or it cuts notches through the continents on the marine erosion uh, process. So some beaches, like I mentioned, actually go through cycles throughout the summer months or winter months. During the winter beach, when you have a, a mostly wind blowing uh, away from, from, the, from the continents, you're going to have some dunes being eroded into berms, berms being collapsed into the water, and you're going to have the formation of bars. But then on the summer beach, when the water is actually flowing, wind is actually flowing the other way, you have less storms and things like that, particularly in this area that we're talking about here. And I'm using this as an example. You're going to have more dune formation from the berm, more formation of the berm from the waves, and you're going to have the destruction of the bar 
to form the berm because the waves are going to be cutting through the berm and depositing that into the berm. So you see how the beach can actually go through a cycle of erosion and formation. Some short-term erosion can happen quickly. More than you would get, look at the, of the winter beach. The winter beach is, the, remember, the one that gets eroded. And you see that in the red line. So you would get something that looks like that. And then you have in the green line how the summer beach would look like after the deposition of sand materials would, look, would happen. This is the specific top area that we're talking about. This may be different for different parts of the world. I'm just giving you this as an example. So while during the summer you're going to get this, during the winter you're going to get that, look what would happen if a storm were to happen. All right? You would have cut through the dune, through the berm, way more than you would in the normal erosion of the, of the winter beach. And so beaches can be eroded quite fast through a very bad storm. That's the point of this, of this slide. You have to remember that. Now, in the long run, beaches actually end up being eroded because of the same process we talked about. As the sea level rises or falls, uh, you're going to have sand loss to the offshore because of those currents which are dragging the sand uh, lower and lower from the shore face into the offshore areas. Now, at the same time, you may also get deposition by waves and then by winds to form the dunes, but if the erosion uh, is bigger than deposition, over time, you're going to have uh, more of a destruction than construction. So this is a review of the same uh, process we talked about before. So it combines both ideas of erosion and, so that, and deposition, creating and destroying the beach. All right? Now, another way that can actually erode the beach is something called the inlet erosion, which is the process of, of a river uh, suddenly changing their, their, their orientation because of a, maybe eroded an area. So, look, for example, look here. You have the way the river looked in November of 2009, and then in March 2010. So in a one year only, because of a change in the river, all right? So the river pattern changed. It changed the entire deposition of this area. So you can see how river changes can actually change the deposition and erosion of the, of the shoreline and create short-term changes uh, very quickly in the shoreline as well. So this is called inlet erosion, okay? Um, so the take-home point then is that you're going to have different kinds of beaches and the beaches are going to go through cycles of construction and destruction depending on what's going on. And the last thing I want to talk about is the idea of sand composition versus and how that affects this, this process. If you have materials which are very fine materials, it's going to be easier to both erode and deposit those materials and the beaches are going to go through fast changes. When you got, you're going to get the berm constructed versus destructed, uh, a shoreline destruction by, by storms, shoreline construction by waves and wind, and things like that. So a beach on the bottom here is what you normally would think of when you think of a beach. And normally beaches like that because are going to tend to be not as steep as other beaches. They're going to be gradual inclines because of the combination of erosion and deposition that we talked about in, this, in these two videos. But if there's more coarse materials, maybe because there's a river carrying, dragging with a very fast-moving river, dragging pebbles and throwing those pebbles in the beach area, and now you have a pebble beach or a beach made, say, maybe of shells, which are harder materials and tougher to move. Things like that, which are tougher to move, are going to take forever to erode or to be deposited there, which means those beaches will last longer and be the way they are for a longer period of time. And because of that, instead of getting... Uh, gentle slope, you're going to have a very steep beach, and that that is going to cause different kinds of waves. Remember, this will cause uh, those plunging waves, while this one will cause other the spilling waves patterns. And so that's why beaches which have harder materials in the shoreline will tend to have different kinds of waves. Now, ironically, that can actually accelerate the erosion of the pebble beach because the waves will be stronger. You have a breaker current that's stronger because of the plunging waves and things like that. But still, it's going to take a long time for that to change because the, the pebbles are hard to move. Remember, we talked about that before. All right, so that is the process of beach formation and destruction. And next video, we're going to talk about living beaches.